Hi, I'm Jeff Walters, and welcome to The Minutes. And thanks for listening today. It's great to have you along on The Minutes for the week of February the 12th, 2024. This is a City of Thunder Bay podcast. The Minutes takes a look at what happened at Thunder Bay City Council this past week. On this episode, we'll have a rundown of what happened on Monday in an interview with City Treasurer Kerry Greaves and Budget Manager Jesse Langan about the city budget, which was ratified on Monday night. It includes an increase in taxes, but also some changes in golf fees and moves around some money within the city departments. The tax rate will go up by 5.47% after growth is factored in. That interview about the budget and all of those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. But first, City Council approved the terms of reference for the Mayor's Task Force on Building More Homes. Creating the task force is part of the Provincial Housing Pledge, which was approved by Council in October of 2023. One of the items of the Housing Pledge is the creation of the task force. Now that the terms of reference are approved, members can now be recruited for the group. The document is written with the assumption that the city will receive money from the province's Housing Accelerator Fund. The purpose of the group is to recommend actions and strategies the city could take to build more homes and more diverse types of housing faster. The goal is to build 2,200 homes in Thunder Bay by 2031. Any recommendations from the group would go directly to City Council. Now, the group will focus its development within the urban settlement area of the city, with the committee consisting of one member of council and six community members. Council made some small changes to the terms of reference in their composition last night, and that's to make sure that the mayor's policy assistant is in the group, along with a development representative. The group will have a $20,000 budget, which will be paid from housing grants that are expected from the federal and provincial governments. Council made some changes to the zoning bylaw on Monday night. In December, planning services started the process of making changes to the bylaw. This includes reducing the setbacks on a backyard home and allows accessible housing on the ground floor of buildings in the Main Street zone. A minimum amount of 60% of street-facing storefront would have to stay commercial, and the home itself could not be on the street-facing portion of the building. There are also other planning decisions approved at Council last night, and this includes removing the holding symbol on a portion of a property at 1507 John Street Road, that's near Woodcrest Road, that would allow the property to be developed that would allow the property to be developed as per the regulations of the urban low-rise zone. Council received an update on the 2023 Drinking Water Quality Management System report. While Council doesn't make any decision on the report itself, it is one of the most important documents to come before Council annually, and it's also one of the biggest responsibilities of Council to make sure people have clean and safe drinking water. An external audit was done in July of last year, confirming that the management system of the water system is effectively implemented and that it meets the requirements. Zero non-conformities were found. And in November of last year, the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks fo- conducted a focused inspection of the water system. The city received a rating of 100%. The city's water authority is in the process of renewing its five-year municipal drinking water license. And as part of the renewal, the recently approved 20-year financial plan was also included. A report on tactile walking plates will be delayed until June of 2025. The plates are found at intersections and they have bumps, so people walking with visual impairments know they're at an intersection. Some are painted yellow and some are not. The report was to provide some direction on the installation of tactile plates prior to the 2024 budget. However, the pandemic delayed the research required to write the report. Presenting the information in 2025 will also give staff an additional winter to study the plates that are in the sidewalks. Council also approved the renewal of a contract for the cement mortar lining of water mains. The budget for the work in 2024 is $2.5 million, and the contract renewal would be in place until 2027. The company, Main Rehabilitation, has been doing the pipelining for numerous years, including last year. This year, cement lining of the pipes will take place in the area across from the Arthur Street Marketplace, and that's bordered by Arthur Street, Terminal Street, Willard Avenue, and Morgan Avenue. The work helps increase water flow and in some cases can also improve water quality. The purchase of three new tandem trucks with a sander, plow and wig needs another council approval after the price increased by nearly $115,000. In November of 2021, council approved the purchase of the three trucks. Due to supply chain issues, the production and delivery of the trucks was delayed. In December of 2023, the vendor, which is Maxim Truck and Trailer, said the production of the trucks should happen in the second quarter of this year. Delivery will take place 
developed by the third quarter of this year. The vehicles will also be 2025 models, as opposed to 2023 models, and with the new model year and inflationary costs, the price has gone up. Maxim Truck and Trailer told the city without the additional funds, they would be unable to fulfill the contract. Now, the city's supply management division says in a corporate report that it is satisfied that the extenuating circumstances warrant the additional cost. Also, speaking about trucks, the city will increase a contract for two garbage trucks worth nearly $148,000. The two trucks are from FST Canada, and again, because of supply chain issues, the manufacturing of the trucks was delayed. They'll also be 2025 models as opposed to 2023 models. And these trucks will also be outfitted as auto cart ready and have split body components so both green bin waste and garbage can be collected at the same time. That's also part of the reason for the price increase. Again, the supply management division says in a corporate report that it's satisfied that the extenuating circumstances warrant the additional cost. And that's a wrap as to what happened at Council this week. For more information on anything that happens at Council, please visit our website, thunderbay.ca slash council. Well, after a number of meetings, hours of reading, debate and discussion, Thunder Bay's 2024 budget is now officially on the books. City Council ratified the budget on Monday night. Carrie Greaves is the city treasurer and Jesse Lankin is the budget manager here in Thunder Bay. And they both join me in the Minute Studio. Carrie, Jesse, thanks for coming in today. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for having us. Yeah, so how are you guys feeling today? Yeah, relieved, I guess, is what, in, in one word, but... Uh... I mean, the, the the process was 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 really was really good this year. It was um, the first time in, I believe, at least in the last nine years that it was a unanimous vote by uh, council, and uh, I think that says a lot about the the process and the the, the hard work that went into it. And and uh, I think everybody came out happy that uh, it came to a, a conclusion that everybody could live with for the for this year and ready to go next year. <laughs> how, yeah, how are you feeling today, Jesse? Uh, good. I mean, it's my second year going through the budget process. Having Carrie as his first year, it was nice to kind of see his fresh perspective on things. Like I saw myself come, kind of coming into the budget last year. So I think today we're just waking up, um, you know, a sense of relief, accomplishment for the whole entire team, whole entire corporation as a whole with all the hard work that goes into the budget and then being able to present it um, as, as proposed and on target was uh, was a huge win for the team. And then going through this these last two weeks, so big sense of accomplishment today. Yeah, right on. Congratulations to both of you. You, you, you got through it, right? <laughs> uh, so, you know, council spent a lot of hours debating this. Now that this is all finalized, I, I guess I'll start with you, uh, Jesse. What does this kind of mean for the for the average person or the, the average taxpayer? So for the average taxpayer, um, we still need to determine the tax ratios. That's kind of the next step in the process. But if we were to look at last year's tax ratios with the current tax levy, um, the increase to the average median home is going to be around $195 on that tax bill. And when you say average median home, like what's the value of that home, I guess? So based on the median home assessment value, we're currently looking at 219000 until MPAC comes and increases those values. And if your house is worth more than you'd have a bigger increase... House worth less, smaller increase? Exactly. Okay. I know it's simple math, but we just want to make sure that everyone actually understands how it works. Because, you know, budgets are budgets are complicated things. They are. Yeah. Uh, Kerry, uh, we hear a lot about uh, before growth and after growth, something that we've heard many times through the budget process. What does that mean? It, it, it is a bit of a tricky concept to uh, comprehend. Um, so growth is the uh, net ta- oh, sorry, the net increase in uh revenue from assessment uh, throughout the year. If the 2024 budget was the same as the 2023 budget, um, with no growth, uh, no assessment change, you would expect your 2024 tax bill to be exactly the same as your 2023 tax bill. So we introduced growth here. So let's say that we have, there's a million dollars worth of growth, worth of uh, assessment growth. What that means is there's more assessment to spread that tax levy uh, around. So all things being equal, your tax bill should go down. So that, that's really why we, we, we uh, introduced the concept of growth is to show the relative impact um, on uh, ex- the, the, the existing tax base. And, and I guess that's a positive. The more growth that you have, the, the you can spread that impact around a little differently. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, examples of the kind of the net change in assessment growth would be anything from new constructions, expansions, um, less any demolitions or successful appeals. That kind of leads to that change in that assessment base that Carrie's referring to. 
Okay. Uh, so I was going to say there's obviously, you know, there, you, you come up with a budget, you have, you know, this, this document that you start with with council, you give it to them, and then they can go back and make changes, as many changes as they want. Uh, what are maybe some of the bigger changes that were made by council compared to where we, compared to where we started? So to start off the process, uh, we usually prepare a memo for any opening budget amendments to any estimates that we had previously submitted within the budget, where now new information is coming forward. Uh, an example this year will be our federal grants from our, our Canada Community Building Fund. So we were able to get that information later on in the process and then just update council on that change. So as a result, it would decrease our funding to go towards capital projects, but as an offset, we would simply transfer more from our capital general reserve fund to make up for those, those planned projects. Okay, so what you're doing is you're essentially you're having to move some money around because things didn't come in as you expect originally. Exactly. Okay. I'm going to ask you a couple about a couple specific projects here that were, you know, kind of bigger items that were changed around by council. Um, I don't know who's the best one to answer either of them, uh, but I'll, I'll start off with the Victoriaville Park 8, I guess. What, what happened in that sense? What happened there is uh, council um, was uh, concerned or they, they, they were looking to for information regarding potentially demolishing the, uh, the, the parkade. After, the, after council had uh, um, agreed to shift some of the budget dollars from 24 to 25, administration was able to uh, kind of go back and bring in the experts um, and determine that... Um, Really, demolition of that of that of that structure is not was not something as straightforward and and as, as easy to accomplish as uh, maybe it was at first uh, believed. Um, there was a lot of um, factors that go into demolition a structure of that size. There, mm-hmm. it's 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 connected to the McKellar Mall. Um, there's a there's a, there's a whole list of of reasons why um, that. Um, probably shouldn't have been considered at, at that time. So um, there was a memo that went to council last night um, explaining that, and the council agreed that uh, we would continue to um, uh, do the, the, the on- ongoing maintenance uh, and then allow us, allow, allow administration to come back uh, more towards 20, uh, 25 budget and the 26 um, uh, year and come back with a different, with a recommendation on how to move forward. So essentially, and I'm I'm just trying to simplify it here. Essentially, what happened was uh, some money was taken out of the budget, and it was kind of put back in. I guess at the end of the day. Yeah, it was uh, you know a decision of council that to at first uh, um, take the money out, or not 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 take the money out, but shift it from the 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 intention of the uh, the original motion from council wasn't to uh, take the money out. It was to shift the money uh, into the future to allow allow some time to do the proper analysis and then so what happened was that the analysis was was a bit more straightforward than originally thought and it was determined that that um, the maintenance should continue um, until we were able to bring back a, a more fulsome report this report is, is, is it would be a very technical report um, and there's a lot of factors so it's, it's not something that we can just you know uh, turn out in a, in a few months it, it, it takes some significant time there are competing priorities for uh, for administration to uh, to do that kind of work. Uh, there's a lot of projects on the go, and really the capacity to, to to undertake that kind of project right now is just not feasible. Just to add to that, like another um, when you talk about competing priorities, one of the big projects in our capital budget this year is the demolition of Victoriaville. Um, so we're looking at a, a ten million dollar project um, for the demolition, and then we start considering the parkade uh, and the demolition work involved. Um, there's just additional work and, and kind of studies that are going to need to take place prior to looking at merging, I think, the two projects. Another thing is to kind of um, understand that the capital commitments that are currently in the budget are in align with the asset management plan. Deferring Originally deferring th- those capital needs could, could uh, in- increase the, those dollars in, in the future. So I think it was just um, recognizing until we have uh, concrete evidence or a good understanding of what those costs would be to kind of change the plan kind of stick stick to what we know and uh, and kind of assess next year yeah the the last week when council had uh, you know directed administration to shift the the those those budget dollars um, the underlying assumption was that it would be easier and cost effective to tear down the uh, parkade and Victoriaville and do the, dem- the Victoriaville demolition at the same time and uh, again we went back to the experts 
um, and found that that was not actually easier or cost effective. A couple other things that were brought back into the budget as well, Christmas Day bus service. So that's just added straight in and that just goes onto the tax levy again? Exactly. Okay. Uh, some of these are, 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 are small items, right? But they all add up. So the other one was a uh, wreck and culture. Uh, so some movie nights added and neighborhood programming. Do you, can you expand more on that? So those are, those reductions are, are part of our uh, report 196 that was last summer. And essentially in order to get the 2023 budget uh, to our, our, our target was to determine reductions that would not be implemented until 2024. So seeing those in the budget are reflections of those prior um, council approvals. So they were simply um, just brought up again this year and uh, added back into the budget. So certain amendments from prior years that were kind of reassessed and uh, revoted on. Yeah, and interesting just because I'm sure, you know, th- those items had a lot of uh, a lot of attention to them, right? So to see them back in, I'm sure pe- people are going, oh, what's what's going on? How did that happen? Yeah, exactly. And you're dealing with uh, with multi-years now with, with our with our budget process. Um, definitely uh, can uh, be hard to keep track. So yeah, definitely. Any any other uh, items that you want to highlight that were either taken in or, or brought out or changes that were that were made to the budget? Uh, no, I, th- I think uh, I mean it was it was a very lively debate throughout the course of the budget delib- deliberations. Um, I think there was a lot of good discussion and a good awareness of um, where we're going as a community. There's uh, the asset management plan. Uh, was referenced uh, several times throughout. Um, that's going to be a very important document going forward. Um, fa- the, the next phase is, is due to be presented um, before July of this year. Um, that's going to bring in the rest of the assets that weren't part of phase one. And then uh, next year in 2025, we are going to uh, have to present a um, financing strategy on how we can, uh, be, well, how we would be able to pay for all these uh, all these assets that we have. I'm, I'm going to give you guys a, a very short period of time here to try to give a pitch about what people should know about the budget. So I'm going to start with you, Jesse. You get the first crack at it. Uh, I'm going to give you, give you about 30 seconds here. If you could tell someone you know, all about the city budget and what they should really know, what would it be? I think a big takeaway for the 2024 uh, City of Thunder Bay budget is that it came, it came in on, on target at Council's direction of 5.5%, looking at uh, 14 other Ontario municipalities below the average uh, at 6.8%, I think is uh, is uh, a key understanding and what our, our city is tr- trying to accomplish while also maintaining that low tax levy, uh, in addition to maintaining service levels while investing in our uh, in- infrastructure. We invested an additional 10%. A large uh, component of that was that demolition project we talked about for, for Victoriaville of $10 million. All right, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Those forty seconds, Carrie. I'm going to see if can you can you do thirty or less. For sure. I, uh, I mean, the budget is the most important annual document that uh, the city produces. It uh, sets the uh, it sets a plan, and um, and council, you know, set a set a target. We uh, met that target, and now it's a matter of uh, implementing and, and uh, executing that uh, that plan. And in terms of the uh, the budget office, I mean, the budget process never really stops. So. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll relax for a little bit, but uh, we're right back into uh, looking at the 2025 uh, budget uh, and uh, starting to put that together um, right away. Kerry, Jesse, appreciate you coming in today. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Jeff. Kerry Greaves is the city treasurer and Jesse Langan is the budget manager here in Thunder Bay. They were both speaking about the 2024 municipal budget, which was adopted by council on Monday night. And a big thanks for listening to the minutes this week. Of course, if you want more information about city council, agendas or minutes, visit thunderbay.ca slash council. If you want to listen to past episodes, maybe provide some feedback, visit our website at thunderbay.ca slash the minutes. You can also find the minutes wherever you get your podcasts. That includes Apple, Google, and Amazon podcasts, along with Spotify, plus our website as well. I'm Jeff Walters. Thanks for listening this week. We'll talk to you again in two weeks. Once council sits again, make it a great day.